share your screen with the audience. Testing. All right. I think we're working. All right. All right let me see if we're on um, Twitter is what I really want to do. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Is this working? Let's see here. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Well, yeah, it'll come up. Good. All right. Um, JMU wins. How about that? Uh, they were the better team. Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt. Uh, your team uh, every day, long day with the uh, the Cajuns winning and, and uh, a 3 nothing ball game that actually only lasted about two hours and 20 minutes. So we got home just after the JMU game uh, got going. So we were a little bit behind. But here's the odd thing. In the second half, both teams played much better than the first. I don't think JMU played all that well. Let's. I don't have access to the good stats. I have access to the ESPN stats, which are fine. Like JMU shot 41%. They were 5 of 17 from three. Noah Friedel hit a huge three when Wisconsin was coming back. But they had a shot early on in this ball game to blow Wisconsin out. It was 18 to five, and they could have been well ahead. They were missing shots. Friedel hit the first shot of the game, which was a three, and that looked like it was going to be a good thing. But they couldn't get any more after that. They were one of their first uh, six, and the game just wasn't the game just wasn't close. Uh, we got uh, let's see here: Smith, uh, JMU Dukes, Jeff Collins, uh, Chad Nicely. Yeah, Dukes with a a huge win. And they were the better team. Surprisingly, they were the more physical team. We had we did tell Ryan Parings that they will look for the best shot. They don't take the fastest shot. And they can defend. And defend, they did. I didn't think Kroll disappeared, per se. I don't think they went to him a whole lot when they had a huge mismatch. He only had four shots or six shots. He made four of them. At one point in time, it was a leading scorer. It was Klesman who kept Wisconsin uh, in the ball game in the second half. JMU got into a little bit of foul trouble, but it seemed to be spread out. Uh, Edwards and Friedel had like two fouls with about five minutes left to go in the first half, maybe a little bit more. They kept on putting Edwards back in on offense. <coughs> uh, but that's a great win. I agree with Mark Byington. That's not an upset. I'm, I need to tweet out quickly uh, a reminder. <laughs> to Brian Ralph. Uh, we'll do that later, I guess. Not in the middle of a live broadcast. Uh, when we were talking back before uh, JMU uh, played in the uh, in the uh, championship game in the Sun Belt, and would they get in with uh, uh, an at-large berth? And they wouldn't. And I tweeted that some five seed is going to be very fortunate not to play JMU. And that was, you know, if they didn't win the Sun Belt and not get an at-large berth. <laughs> Wisconsin was not in that ball game from the get-go. Uh, they did a much better job in the second half uh, making shots. Again, Klismet, um was outstanding, right? He pump faked Friedel a lot. He absolutely kept Wisconsin in the ball game, or this would have been a 20-point game. And I'm one of those idiots that, you know, how many more points do they need to win the ball game? Right. Like it's 55, 45. And then it was magically 55, 46. I'm like, they're going to need more than 60. But if they get to 70, like Wisconsin's not scoring 70. And then Michael Green misses a layup. <laughs> no. uh, and again, you call, I, as a team, JMU played really well. OK, as a team, they actually hit some free throws down the stretch. Uh, they missed nine free throws, but those nine were. Like they were 11 to 19, they finished up like 21 30. So they hit a bunch at the end. They out rebounded Wisconsin 37 to 35. Uh, and obviously, the difference was the turnovers. Uh, JMU got sloppy a little bit to begin the second half, and then late in the second half, uh, 19 to 12 for turnovers, points over turn points off of turnovers, 28 to 10. Uh, it was awesome. Points in the paint, JMU 32 to 22. So, what I asked was, you know. Uh, you know, could JMU handle Wisconsin size? And the answer is yes. Uh, hey, guys, if you see this stream, please like it. Please share it. Don't forget to subscribe to Lockdown Sunbelt. Really appreciate the help. We'll do this for about, you know, 10 minutes or so just to go over the ball game. Again, in a game that I did not think was all that close. 
And um, Jam, you played all that well, right? Because you go through, uh, we told you the team stats. Team stats, they played pretty well, except the shooting, all right? <coughs> they only shot 41%. Now, Wisconsin shot 37%. Uh, and they only shot 30% from three. And then you go through the box score. And, you know, TJ Bickerstaff was good because he's not going to shoot it from very far outside. Uh, no three-point attempts. Uh, five of eight for 12 points. You know, uh, Wooden, four for eight for 12 points. You know, Xavier Brown, you know, struggled 0 for three from three, two for eight, right? Terrence Edwards was not the efficient Terrence Edwards that, he has been this year. It looks more like Donovan Gregory when he's five of 13. There's no reason to take a shot at Donovan Gregory for half state. There's no reason for that. But five of 13 for 14 points. Noah Friedel, all of two three pointers. That's all he made the whole game. And they were big. It was the first one. And then the one that uh, right after the Klismet missed layup, it pushed what, what could have been a four point game uh, back to a nine point game. And that was really the last gasp that uh, Wisconsin had, you know, Horton was one of four, Carey one of two, uh, Green three of seven, uh, though he did hit uh, two three-pointers. So uh, as, as great as this win is, right, JMU didn't play all that well. Wisconsin was bad, right? They played, I'll rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. JMU played outstanding on the defensive end, all right? They were fantastic on the defensive end. They did not play that well. Uh, they didn't play that well offensively. All right. That that would be the deal. All right. They did not play that well offensively. And I did tweet it out. Let me see how the first half went uh, points wise, because it was insane a little bit. I, I did it after the half. Let me see here. All right. Wisconsin averages 75 points a game. They were held to 20 in the first half. All right. They scored five in the first 10 2 Like, Kroll hit a big three-pointer. It was 18-5. to I think Wooden may have hit a three-pointer, made it 18-5, to and then Kroll came back with a three-pointer, made it 18-8. to Who knows if he misses that? It could be a 20-5 to ball game. Who knows? So they had five points in the first 10 2 Then Kroll hit his three. They had four points in the last 7-0-3, and they were all free throws. They did not hit a field goal in the last 7.03. They uh, uh, hit a layup and got an and one, and that was it. They got a off-the-ball foul, which I thought was a foul. Uh, I think Horton grabbed him, and it was, uh, he made both free throws. And then underneath, there was a foul. There's a push. He hooked him, and he made two free throws then as well, uh, Wisconsin did. But that was it. They were, they were outstanding. It was um, defensively, they were tough. And now here's the thing, right? We'll see how tough Duke can be because Duke can be a little chippy themselves, right? This is the dream matchup outside of maybe, well, I guess Virginia because it's in Virginia. But outside of, you know, Carolina, Duke is the matchup that you always dream of, right? Over the last 40 years, some teams have had a run. Florida had a good run, right? Kentucky, I guess, right, has been there. But if you're playing for the James Madison Dukes and you have a chance to play Duke to go to the Sweet 16, yeah, that's that's what they're that's what they're hoping for. So, and that's what they got. So Duke took care of, of Vermont. Now, defensively, they that if they play that way, they'll certainly be in the game against Duke. The thing is, Duke can play good defensively, I think. And um JMU is going to have to play better offensively. All right. They missed some contested shots, but they missed a bunch of open shots uh, as well. So they need to, uh, you know, and again, you, you look at the percentage. If you may, well, here's the thing, right? If you make five more shots. So they were 23 of 56. If you make five more shots, you're 50%. Right? 28 of 56. All right. I was told there would be no math. Uh, and then uh, and then it's a blowout. And really, that could have been in the first half when Wisconsin really was not in this ball game. I'm not sure. I mean, Wisconsin made a little bit of a run in the in the first half, right? They got it down. It was 18 to five, and then they got it down to 23 16. And then JMU went on another run. Um, again, Klismet came out in the second half and was on fire. 
five of nine uh, three-pointers. He, he finished five of 12. Uh, he cooled off a little bit. But without Klisman, uh, this is a 20-point ball game. It is a 20-point ball game. So I appreciate you guys uh, in the chat. Thanks so much. This is the first live one. I get no graphics. I'm going to have to figure out on how to do the graphics. Let me see. Can I edit? Uh, customization, edit graphics, monetization. I, I guess I get that on. Uh, rights management. All right. I don't know if I can. We'll have to figure that out. All right. Uh, uh, M4 box prods. Uh, Duke's on top. Yeah, it was a great, uh, great ball game. I thought... So I went out to have a burger on my way to the Cajuns game. And I say my, uh, my, my buddy is the bouncer of all things. He's just checking IDs. I'm not sure bouncer is the right term. When I left the bar to go see my friend at the front, Auburn was up 10. And telling him, uh, you know, watch out, Wisconsin. There's no upsets today yet. And then... Auburn lost to Yale. And I'm like, well, Wisconsin would probably feel a lot better now because usually there's one upset, right? Like yesterday was Kentucky and there were a couple upsets yesterday. Uh, but no real upsets yet today until the Auburn ball game. And seed wise, I think this is an upset. But I mean, I think JMU is really good. I, if they would play, we'll find out. You know, Duke has, you know, probably better athletes than Wisconsin. And Wisconsin kind of had the athletes that I kind of thought, right? They're good college basketball players, but they're not high-flying athletes like you might find on a Kentucky or a Kansas or a Duke or a Carolina. And and they're beatable. And, you know, they don't move quickly when they're behind. I mean, I kind of thought the game was over at at half, and they made the one run. And so – that here's the, that's the thing. I keep on coming back to it, right? JMU played really well defensively, <coughs> but if they played as well as JMU could be offensively, none of these guys would have played 30 minutes. This, this would have been a 20 to 30 point blowout. And, um, and Duke, let's be honest, Duke, Duke's beatable, right? I, I'll take my chances with, uh, Mark Byington. Against John Shire. All right. I'll take my chances with that. That's, you know, Mark's got a lot more experience uh, than John does. I'll tell you my, I'll take my uh, chances with that. Um, let's see if we got a schedule here. All right. And and Duke is beatable, right? I mean, Duke is still Duke. Everybody thinks that. But, I mean, they're still, they're, they're, relatively beatable. I mean, Vermont gave them a little bit of a ball game. Let's see what uh, they lost to Carolina. They lost to uh, NC state. Um, they lost to wake they had a nice little run in there. They lost to Carolina twice. But that's Carolina. You know. uh, they lost to Pitt. That was a close ball game. They went on the road to lose to Arkansas. That may have been before Arkansas was bad. So I think they got a shot. Let me see if we got, um, an early line? Do we have an early line on this ball game yet? Uh, no, not yet. I'm probably going to say this game was down to, I don't even know what this game was. Was it four and a half? I, and I didn't bet it. I should have bet it. Both the money the money line and the, and the line. Um, let me see if they have this game up yet. I'm going to go Duke 8. That would be my, that would be my guess. That's my, that's just a guess at all. Um, I don't have any, you know, just because it's Duke probably should be a little bit lower. Uh, But I would, uh, let's see. See, uh, Can I just get into the, the, I got to sign in. They make you sign into your account. I just want the odds. Let me see if I can get the odds. Um, they may not have the odds because college basketball or basketball in general, right? They don't, um, they don't put the odds out until the day before or the, the conference or in the tournament. Let me see if we have a Duke. Um, I do not see Duke yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, it is, there's no, uh, point spread on there yet. 
but Duke is a three minus three twenty five. James Madison plus two sixty. So I guess that's kind of what we're looking at. I'll give you an example. Houston is a minus ten favorite against A and M. They're minus four seventy. So this is probably five six point spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting. Scott Wright popping in. Thanks so much. Uh, go Dukes again. A great. Great win for JMU. Great win for uh, the Sun Belt. Um, I want to say App State got screwed when they played Wake, but Wake earns an NIT berth, and you got to play those games at home. It would have been interesting to see them not, but they did not handle the size well. Whereas I kind of feel like JMU was kind of physical. I'm going to go back and watch the game, and they were kind of. Remember the Patriots back, you know, like during the first run, like against the Colts and Manning, and they would bump those wide receivers. I kind of feel like that's what JMU was doing. That JMU was making sure that they got a body on the cutters. Right? We're going to make sure that that's the case, right? We're going to make sure we're bodying you up when a shot goes up. Uh, and Mark Byington said at the end of the game, you know, we're going to, uh, um, our numbers, right? And something you can't keep up with them. You know, like I didn't sometimes you don't even realize Ted Edwards is out of the ballgame. Uh, that our numbers got to them, right? They are eight, nine, ten deep. And you know, they did a great job buying 10. Like I said, did a great job with Edwards going in and out of the lineup. Uh, you know, going in and out of the lineup um when he was in foul trouble. So I'll take my chance with Vinton. I think we're looking at now, like if it's minus three sixty or minus three twenty five. Really, it's not going to be that big of a spread. It's not going to be that big of a spread, and it could very well go down. And what has to be, I mean, you guys tell me. I'll I'll find out from the JMU guys. But this has got to be the biggest ball game in JMU history, outside of the first one, right? I mean, and certainly if they beat Duke, it'll be the biggest one in their history let's see what the bracket is who is on the other side you always want to see uh, well <laughs> they get houston <laughs> it's not going to be easy the other side huh, has nc state and oakland and colorado marquette's a number two seed so the 11 seed uh had advanced over the six seed oakland is the 14 seed and colorado is is the 10 seed so somehow <laughs> If James Madison can get past Duke and get past Houston, they may get a break. I don't know if AM is going to be able to keep up with Houston. So uh, SEC did not have a good day today. They did not, right? They, Tennessee is the only winner, right? And uh, Greg Sink, he said, we, you know, we got to question some of those teams that get automatic berths, and we're hoping the Sun Belt gets more than one. Right. I, there are some teams out there App State could have kept up with on a neutral court. Uh, so <coughs> uh, good stuff for the JMU Dukes. I still think, again, I'm going back to it. I still think they can play better. They did not. They did not shoot the ball well tonight. And that wasn't because of Wisconsin. Whereas Wisconsin didn't play well offensively because of what JMU was doing defensively. There is the difference. I think uh, there is the difference. Um, Baseball-wise, I think JMU took it on the chin. Texas State, I think, had them. Cajuns won 3 nothing. Um, they're half a game out, if that matters. Uh, although I don't think they went up in the in the rankings. They didn't. They beat ODU is higher in the Warren Nolans, and it, it didn't move the Cajuns at, at all. Uh but we'll worry about the baseball uh, tomorrow and then enjoy this ball game on Sunday. And, and now you get to savor it, right? All those JMU fans get to bask in the glow of a victory in New York and get a night. They get to go out tonight in New York City or Brooklyn. And then they get to enjoy themselves for a night um, and, and look forward to it. Uh, Robert Gustafson, the Dukes, could have been nailing threes tonight. They have more in the tank for Duke. I completely agree with you, Robert. If you're just joining us, they played extremely well offensively, or I'm sorry, defensively. They did not play well offensively. They were 
I would tend to believe that Mark Myington going to tell you they were bad offensively. They could have played much better. I don't think 12 turnovers is – kind of got a little bit sloppy in there. Um, but, no, that you're, you're absolutely right. You had – I said five more shots. They would have shot 50%, and it would have been a blowout from uh, the get-go. So, uh, I, I agree with that, that uh, if they hit their threes, that here's going to be the difference, though. <laughs> the difference it's, – it's not so much JMU. It's going to be Duke. Duke's going to be much better defensively than Wisconsin, right? We did the lockdown Sunbelt with Ryan Pairings, and he said that Wisconsin struggles defensively, and they did. They they, they really did. Um, they struggled offensively, too. Um, but um, so now these fans get to, they get to bask in the glow. It didn't, I think upstate got a little bit cool, but it didn't look like the weather was that bad in New York City. Now they get to enjoy, you know, Go grab some good food, do some touristy things, have a nice dinner, get up the next day and have some brunch. Do we have a game time yet for this game yet? Oh, TBA. No, TBD. Does not. Uh, we do not have a game time because that's going to matter on who play, who uh, who else is playing. But usually Duke is like the last game, right? That's Duke is usually, I mean, you got Houston and Texas A&M. That's going to be big in the Houston market, but I don't think here's the other thing about that. Nobody in Houston cares about it. <laughs> no, nobody in Houston cares about Houston. That's the thing. Uh, lockdown Badgers were too cocky and talking trash about the Sun Belt. Were they? Was Ryan Parents doing that? I'll have to go back and watch because I don't think he was talking uh, trash. Not on the episode that we did, uh, John, John Appleseed. If you see, um, uh, if you go back and watch, they were not. They were not talking trash. I tried to get into their Discord, but um, I tried to get into the Discord, but I, I, I couldn't. All right. Uh, Robert Gustafson, I've been watching all season, stayed up late to watch Michigan State overtime win and was at the Akron game in Harrisonburg. Go Dukes. Yeah. Well, you deserve it, Robert. It's a it's a great feeling. And again, uh, having gone through this, I'm a Syracuse fan. So having gone through this, you get that sense of anticipation and as a Syracuse fan, all I always wanted to do was get through the first weekend. All right. Now, if you get through the first weekend and you're James Madison, you've exceeded expectations. You really have. All right. Um, but then you get this whole week to look forward to the Sweet 16. And unless another lower seed gets there, JMU is going to be the darling of America for, you know, three or four days. Right. Especially if they take down Duke. Right. The only people who root for Duke are Duke fans. No one else roots for Duke. <laughs> right. Some people, some other people, some people, other people may root for Carolina or uh, Houston. Although, again, in Houston, they don't even care about Houston. But there's some fans, right? You got, you know, so no one's rooting for Duke outside of the Duke fans. Uh, it'll be interesting. All right. Um, they are live right now, and they were saying the conference is trash. Oh, he's doing a live thing right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, not so much. You know, here's the thing, and not to take a shot at McNeese. There's no reason to do that, right? McNeese. Did not have the best of all schedules. And then they stepped out and then didn't play particularly well. That doesn't take away anything what Will Wade did. But, you know, I don't think the announcers, Ian Eagle and Bill Raftery and Grant Hill, could be any more complimentary, right? Like November, December, February, and March. The only month that App State has lost has been in January, right? They haven't lost in like two months, <laughs> right? Um how do we get Noah Friedel more into the game against Duke? He was kind of silent tonight, a big part of what makes us great. But TJ was fully engaged tonight and was huge. Well, I, I would think, I, you know, the other team is going to try and take away Noah Friedel, right? We're not going to let him beat us. You can't take away everything. That's why JMU, uh, that's why they look so good in that Summit Championship game. Because not only did you get the big three in the second half, but you got Xavier Brown and Jalen Carey in the first half, right? I don't even remember Michael Green doing all that much in that ball game. Uh, but you, you, you got to try to stop somebody, right? And they, you know, as we said, uh, Terrence Edwards only five of 14, so they did a good job when he got into the lane and turned. Um, so Wisconsin going to get a little bit of credit because we got we got to stop somebody, all right? Um, and maybe if he had made a couple of more because he missed some open shots. Maybe he missed some open shots. You know, it could also be a thing where he says, I don't have it tonight, and I'm going to look for the other guys. Could be That could be the uh, the other thing. So um, they're live, right? 
Sunbelt is trash. I don't know how you can say the Sunbelt is trash when this was not a back and forth ball game, right? This was not the JMU, was it Texas State, right? This was not the JMU Texas State ball game where we got a tie game with like five minutes left to go. Wisconsin was never in this ball game, ever, the whole game. They got close in the second half. They got it to six. They missed a layup. Friedel hit his second three and went back to nine, and that was the game. This was not a close ball game uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And um, maybe Wisconsin is embarrassed because of the way they played. They were not nearly as physical as JMU was. I don't want to say that, that, that JMU was dirty. That's not what I'm saying. But it seems like they made a concerted effort to, to me, they seem to have made a concerted effort to um, make sure that Wisconsin knew that they were there. Again, I think the Patriots thing is a great example. Back in the day, right, they changed the rules because the Patriots defenders got all handsy with the Colts wide receivers. And so any cuts, anything that that, Jim, that Wisconsin did, JMU made sure they felt it. That's what I thought. All right. We'll have to go. We'll have to comment on what JMU. Um, John, is that on? Is that on? Uh, are they on YouTube as well? They're live as well. Um, I I don't know how they cannot be any more complimentary. These were not. So we've all seen. Excuse me. Stupid turnovers in college basketball. Most of the turnovers that Wisconsin had were all forced turnovers. Like they got stolen. What do they want? Fouls? I will say there was one at the end of the half that Edwards stuck his hand in. <coughs> Excuse me. Edwards stuck his hand in. Could have been a foul on, on JMU, admittedly. Uh, but otherwise, I I I thought that um uh, I really thought that uh, uh Wisconsin's turnovers were forced because of JMU. Uh, yeah. Maybe a couple were not. I think they threw a couple away, but most of the most of the turnovers were just they, they swiped them. I mean, what can what can you do if Hepburn looked like he almost broke his ankle, right? I mean, he tw he twisted his ankle. By the way, I've done that. I broke my foot doing that. Um, but his ankle gave way, right? There was no foul on the play. His ankle gave out, and and JMU goes the other way. So. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know why JMU is, or Wisconsin is complaining. Also, I'm not going to complain about the refs. Did they call a lot of fouls? Yeah, I thought they were kind of even. There were a couple of calls late that I thought went against JMU. Um, but I, I can't, you can't complain about the fouls when it's 13, when it's 33 to 20, right? It's 33 to 20. You can't complain about the fouls then. No. Uh, a great game by JMU. Uh, they will have to play better offensively to beat Duke. Uh, defensively, bring that again, and they'll be in the game. We'll see how tight they call it. And uh, and Duke is usually as deep as anybody. I don't I have not watched a whole lot of Duke this year. Did they even play? Did they even play Syracuse this year. Usually they do, but usually they blow them out. Uh, they did. So I didn't watch very much. Eighty. 86, 88. Um, <clears throat> uh, Robert, again, JMU made the Badger players very uncomfortable all night, Robert. Absolutely right. Like double teaming wall every time he got the ball to post. I was totally expecting Wisconsin to make a run, but they never managed to get the momentum. They did make a little run, right? I mean, they were immediately down like 15 in the second half. JMU made the first bucket in the second half. And so they're down 15 and quickly they got it down to seven, something like that, or eight. Uh, and again, they had a chance that, uh, you know, Christoph, let me see his name. I, I don't know why I can't remember his name. Uh, let me see. They got it down to six. And uh, Klesmit missed the layup. Like it sat on the rim. Almost like Tiger Woods putt at the Masters years ago. And in, in this case, it fell out, right? That would have made it a four-point ball game. Instead, he misses the layup, and Friedel, up six, hits the other three-pointer. 
So that's that's where the game kind of turned. That's where the game uh, uh, absolutely, I don't want to say turned, but ended for Wisconsin. That was basically the end of the run uh, for Wisconsin. You know, It was a great win by, um, by JMU. <clears throat> I probably have to do a Duke preview game now. On uh, We'll do one. I guess we'll do one for Sunday. We'll do one for Sunday. I'll have to watch. Maybe I'll go watch a Duke Duke ball game, right? So we'll go. We'll we'll do, we'll do a little bit of that. But um, now I got to go watch. Now I got to go watch Locked On. Excuse me, Locked On Badgers, just to see uh, what they're saying. I mean, you know, I don't know. I, sorry to put it this way, but Wisconsin got outclassed, right? The Big Bad Big Ten got outclassed, and I've been saying here for thirty minutes. JMU didn't play all that well offensively, right? It, it could have been a blowout. It, Wisconsin is fortunate that this game ended as close as it did. That's what I think. So, uh, really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. We got we got a handful. It's my first uh, live one. I'm going to try and do my own show podcast. I guess we'll see how that goes. I got a total of ten great. Um, Subscribers, I don't even know if they know they subscribe over on my YouTube channel. But if if you guys would please subscribe to Lockdown Sunbelt, it would be a big help. See if we can get it up to 1,200, especially, boy, if JMU makes a run to the Sweet 16. Uh, I got about 34 more to go to get me up to uh, to get me up to 1,200 subscribers. That would be uh, a big help, all right? And we will do, do baseball and probably a little softball, right? I mean, basketball is just about done. Um, well, how does Duke try to keep up with JMU on Sunday? Well, th- again, Robert, the difference is going to be JMU is going to be a lot better defensively than Wisconsin. All right. And if JMU shoots the way they just shot, they're going to have a long day because because Duke will, at least from memory, uh, Duke is usually pretty good defensively. All right. And they'll have some size and they'll have uh, more athletes than Wisconsin did. Uh, I mean, let's see. We can. You know, quickly, uh, let's see here. Duke basketball stats. Let's see here. Wisconsin, again, averaged, right, 75 points a game. Let's see what we got here. All right. So Duke averages about 80 points a game, but they only give up 66. Uh, Let's see what they, you know, shooting-wise, opponents are only shooting – 43% 43% against Duke. Yeah, that's not good, right? That is, I mean, that's really good defensively, not good offensively. Uh, Three-point percentage against is 32%. So that's going to be the big difference in the game is going to be Duke's defense is going to be a lot better than Wisconsin's defense. And they're going to have a lot more athletes to compete with JMU than uh, Wisconsin did. So. Uh, yeah, Robert need to nail the threes like the Sunbelt attorney final game. Uh, great free throw shooting in the second half. They were much better in the second half. Again, I thought they were like 11 out of 19 at one point in time and they finished up what they finish up. Uh, 21 of 30. So 10 of 11, they hit 10 of their last 11 free throws. That's yeah, that's probably why that's a good point. Probably. A good reason why they won the ball game. All right, uh, first uh, live YouTube thing, and don't have any graphics again. Uh, locked. I'm the host. Locked on. I'm the host. I'm the host. Dave Schultz of Locked On Sun Belt. There you go. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Look for the preview edition. I will get a. I will get a Duke uh, JMU preview episode up uh, tomorrow. Again, the defense. The off. I will say this again. The offense is going to have to do a lot better for JMU in um in the second in the in the ball game uh compared to what they did tonight defensively if they play that way defensively they'll be in the game if they want to win it they're gonna have to play better offensively because duke is gonna be much better defensively uh i appreciate you staying up uh late robert it is uh late on the east coast i didn't realize this you know our the baseball game went by so fast uh tonight was i home by nine something like that i don't live that far from the ballpark so uh, and I forget JMU is in the on the uh, 
Eastern time zone. All right. Uh, thanks so much for staying up. All right. Good 35 minute uh, live episode. Congratulations to Duke, uh, to JMU Duke, 72 61 over Wisconsin in what was a relatively easy win. Uh, and congratulations to the Sun Belt. That's nice to get uh, the Sun Belt to get a victory. Uh, the whole country outside of the Dukies are going to be rooting for JMU. Just know that. All right. All the best, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm your host, Dave Schultz, and you've been watching Locked on Sunbelt, your team, every day.